Hi there, this is the unrecognizable Zugzwang paralysis trap in the Sicilian checkover variation and we're going to follow the course of the intriguing game Onoprienko against Jarash played in Mlada Boleslav in the Czech Republic in 1994. E4 and Sicilian with C5, Knight F3, D6, D4 takes and rather than recapture with the Knight, White goes for the checkover variation with Queen takes on D4. Black, as it were, gains time on the queen by playing knight c6. But white need not um, lose a tempo and can develop bishop b5 pinning the knight. When bishop d7 unpins, the threat on the queen is reinstated, so white trades minor pieces on c6. Black can recapture with the pawn or here with the bishop. Bishop takes on c6, to which white can consider c4 or perhaps the more popular knight c3. After knight f6 and bishop g5, <clears throat> white is uh, planning to disrupt black's pawn structure with a capture on f6. So e6 by black keeps everything intact. White will castle long. Black plays bishop e7, breaking the pin, planning to castle short on the next move. So white brings his rook into the center, the other rook, rook h, e1, and now castles. In this position, which I've played many times in my modest chess playing career, the queen can drop back, say, to d2 to vacate the d4 square for the knight. <coughs> Alternatively, white might consider the prophylactic king b1 or the most common, really aggressive e5 as played here. That's going to be met by d takes on e5, and white will avoid trading of queens, and will prefer to swing the queen over to h4. And now the rook on d1 is hitting the black queen, which escapes to c7. And now the knight recaptures the pawn on e5. In this position, black can continue solidly with a move like h6 or perhaps rook d8. But if instead black plays this questionable and dubious move, knight d5, then perhaps white here can gain advantage. The bishops are confronting each other, so bishop takes on e7. Um, white, or black I should say, is not going to recapture with a queen because that's going to allow advantage to white after queen takes on e7, knight takes e7, knight takes on um, c6, and the rook's going to invade to d7 with advantage for white. So after... Bishop takes e7, black's going to retake with the knight. Now, this is a fantastic idea, rook d7. It's uh, hitting the queen, it's hitting the knight as well, but it's leaving itself for capture by the bishop. So after bishop takes on d7, now queen takes on e7, white's the exchange down, but the bishop on d7 is very awkwardly placed there, pinned. So it's going to be defended by one of the rooks, rook a d8. And now rook e3, and we have a situation quite intriguing where really black is in total Zugzwang. What can black do? If a move like um, rook, one, say rook f to e8, then queen's going to take on f7. If the other rook, threatens then queen takes the bishop that's being pinned if f6 let's just run through that one if f6 hitting the knight then the rook can swing over to g3 and this looks pretty devastating if the pawn the g pawn moves to g6 the knight takes g6 will be winning or if the pawn moves to g5 then uh, rook h3 is going to be winning so black is quite crippled here if in the game b6 planning perhaps to play queen c5 to to trade queens then white's going to simply play this nice move b4 taking away that b4 or that c5 square for black and now after a move like a6 then white can proceed f4 queen c8 the queen gets out of uh, out of the pin but now knight e4 if bishop a4 now by black threatening 
mate on c2 then rook c3 is hitting the queen which moves into the corner queen a8 or queen b8 but now white is winning with this fantastic finale knight f6 check um, black can't really take the knight because if g takes f6 rook g3 is going to be mate next move after king h8 and queen f6 that's checkmate so after knight f6 if the king moves over to h8, then we have a lovely finish here with this sacrifice. Queen takes on f7. Quite remarkable, because if rook takes on f7, then knight takes on f7 is checkmate. Those knights doing all the work. And if a move like g takes on f6, then they'll be mate after knight g6 check, forcing h takes g6, and now the rook moves over to g to h3 with a lovely checkmate so after knight f6 if black tries bishop takes c2 then white mates with a smothered queen sacrifices herself on g8 queen g8 check and now after rook takes on g8 then knight f7 is checkmate so this has been the unrecognizable zugzwang paralysis trap in the sicilian checkover thanks for watching bye bye